Hey, Yorktown family. Thank you for tuning in to this short video update and also hopefully a word of encouragement. Hopefully you've heard by now that we're going to start our regathering for our in-person worship services beginning Sunday, June the 7th at both 9 o'clock and 1045. Uh, because of the guidelines that have been issued by the authorities, there's not going to be any kids' church, nor Bible fellowships, or child care. Uh, so uh, we're going to have worship only. Uh, but we also are going to be streaming our 9 o'clock service uh, online as we've done in the past. It'll be archived afterwards. So in the event that you're unable to make it on June the 7th or on the Sundays uh, thereafter, then please join us online at 9 o'clock. Uh, again, it won't look like what uh, you're, you're seeing the last several weeks, but it will be a quality online uh, worship service. So please join your church family for worship. We're excited about us meeting uh, together again in person. Uh, our next phase should allow us to resume all those ministries uh, once we get more directives from our state and local authorities. Again, stay tuned. Uh, just so you know, over the next two Sundays, I'm going to be sharing a couple of messages about uh, two of the three major festivals in the life of the Jews in the Old Covenant. And we're going to see how they were fulfilled in the New Covenant. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be looking at the oldest Memorial Day in the history of mankind. It's called Passover. Uh, 3,500 years ago, it was started as the nation of Israel was being birthed and freed from the slavery in Egypt. And we're going to see how that was fulfilled in Jesus as the Passover lamb. So let me encourage you to have your children, the students watch. It's neat to see how God orchestrated his plan of redemption throughout history. Again, we're going to observe communion together, so make sure you have your elements ready to go before the service starts. Again, the title of this message is The Ultimate Memorial. I don't know about you, but it's, it's tough to know who to believe in this COVID-19 pandemic, isn't it? I mean, you hear views that seem to be polar opposites based on some of the same facts, and you wonder if people have ulterior motives when it comes to their point of view or their suggestions on how to move forward. And I don't know about you, but it's easy to become cynical, skeptical, and maybe even angry. And if we're not careful, as Christ followers, we can get sucked in to that chaos and confusion of the world. What we need is a biblical perspective. We need to know truth. Uh, back in the days of World War I, there was a young pastor in Switzerland by the name of Karl Barth. Now, this was, again, he was in Switzerland, and just across the border, there was the fire of war. Uh, Eugene Peterson has a book to where he tells a story about how uh, just the Word of God began to come alive in Karl Barth's spirit. He wrote a commentary on the book of Romans that is a classic commentary uh, for pastors and, and scholars. Uh, but Eugene Peterson said the soul and body of Europe and eventually the world was being violated, talking about World War I. On every continent, millions were hanging on news from the front and on speeches from the world's leaders as reports, as reported by the journalist. Meanwhile, Bart, Karl Bart, was writing what he had discovered, the extraordinary truth-releasing, God-witnessing, culture-changing realities in the Bible. Listen to this. Again, I wish I had this on the screen where you could see this quote. He wrote that the Bible was giving a truer, more accurate account of what was going on in their seemingly unraveling world than what their politicians and journalists were telling them. Still is. We talk about the Bible. It is giving a more accurate account of what is going on now. Uh, and we're making decisions as a church. I know you as individuals and families are making decisions uh, uh, concerning or from the news that we get from the front. However, all of this is to be viewed from the lens of God's Word, which is truth. And when I think of trying to know the truth, I think of when Jesus was, after he was arrested, he was brought before Pontius Pilate. And he told Pilate, of course, Pilate asked him, are you, are you the king or a king? And, and Jesus said, that's what you've said, but I want you to know that I was born and I have come into the world to testify to the truth. And then Jesus said, everyone who loves truth recognizes my voice. To which Pilate responded, what is truth? Now, we don't know if Pilate asked that sarcastically or if he asked it quizzically, but what we know uh, that Pilate afterwards turned and said, I, f I find no fault in this man. But we know what truth is. Uh, in John 1.14, he said, Jesus was full of grace and truth. 
In John 14, 6, Jesus said of himself, I am the truth. In John 17, 17, when Jesus is in his high priestly prayer, praying to uh, God his Father, uh, this is more, more so the Lord's Prayer than the model prayer that we find in the, in the early part of the gospel. He said to the Lord, sanctify these disciples, those who are following me, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. This week, I know as many of you are, you're reading uh, through the early part of Matthew, which is a part of our two-year reading plan at Yorktown. And Jesus, I, I was just struck again uh, by the authority with which Jesus spoke. In fact, at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, it said the people were stunned by the authority with which he spoke, unlike some of their teachers of the law and some of the scribes. Uh, why? But, but because it was truth. Truth penetrates the heart. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Jesus said the following, Therefore, everyone who's, who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock of truth. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded on that house, and it collapsed, and its collapse was great. If you want to know truth and what is true, look to the living Word of God, Jesus. Look to the written Word of God, the Bible. During these times, church, it's important that we stay focused on the truth, we stay grounded in truth, and we obey the truth. And so may God bless you as you remain in the truth and abide in Christ. I look forward to seeing you uh, 9 o'clock. And again, stay tuned for ongoing updates as concerning our future regathering and our time together. Again, God bless you. Thank you for watching.